Hello and welcome to another episode of The Key Point with me right here on New World TV English. I have in the studios a gentleman and a lady and we are going to have the conversation on Youth Dedication for Impact, the conversation. It all centers on individuals and initiative designed to guide, to give commitment and purpose to young individuals to empower them so that they can make strong commitment to dedications and things that they do at the long term will have a good impact. So welcome once again in the studio. I have Mr. Stark Bode, who is a business and project manager. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. It's my first time being here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad you were able to make it. And I have Miss Nadesh Abiri Bumoge, who is also a jurist and a project manager. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. So we don't want to waste much time. The topic already speaks about youth dedication. So we are going to center the conversation on the youth, and we are going to look at why and what they need to do in terms of dedication, so that at the end of it all, we'll have the impact that we are looking for. So I would want to start with you. The first thing I want to talk about is how do we inspire, how do we cultivate, and how do we channel the de dedication in the youth so that we can have the long-term impact? Well, that, that's a very good question, and uh, it's a tough one to, to answer. Okay. It's a very tough one to answer, let's say it. Mm, youths are very bold, especially Togolese youth. They are very bold, very ambitious, and uh, that is one of the things that makes it difficult to to inspire them, right? Because one of the things that they want is to succeed without going through the steps that their elders, the previous generations, followed. So they want to jump from the beginning and arrive at the end. <laughs> and this is what makes it difficult to inspire them. But coming back on the question of how we inspire them, first of all, we need to understand what motivates them, okay. what they find interesting, what they are into. And once we have identified the different subjects, the different things in which they are interested, now we can come up with ideas to make them work on it. Let me, let me give an example. Um, if we take some some students okay. below 18 years old, yeah, in a, in a public school of Togo, for example, right? You cannot come there and expect to inspire them on uh, road safety. <laughs> they they won't be interested. You cannot arrive at school and tell them that you are going to um, talk to them about road safety and expect them to be hundred percent involved. You see, mm -hmm. but. If you come there and you want to talk to them on a subject like music mm -hmm. or dancing, then you can trigger a light in them. And by doing so, you'll be able to inspire them into taking action, let's say, for example, to promote um, Togolese music, sure. to promote Togolese culture. So it really comes down to that. First, you identify your target, what they are interested into, and now you come back with an idea that you can get them involved in. So in, in a way of doing that, we are trying to avoid putting square holes in a, a round peg. So you pick an idea that conforms with the it, environment where they are. That's the it. Interest that they progress before you can actually inspire them. Exactly, them. exactly. That is. OK. Yeah. <laughs> w what is your submission on this interview? Well, actually, uh, before coming back on your question, I would like to give uh, a definition of a youth. Um, who is that person that we call a youth, actually? You know, you are a youth, he is an I am. But we are different ages. Right? Of course. <laughs> and according to the UN, youth um, are those persons aged between um, 18 and 35. Mm -hmm. And according to Togo, uh, <laughs> the youth the are, is, is of, in of course, terms. of course. <laughs> Go ahead. They are those pe person aged between um, 12, if I'm not lying, 12 and 35. So uh, all of us know that they occupy like 75 percent of the population, and then before doing something that inspire them, we actually, as Stark said, we actually have to know what are their needs and their will. Because it's very important if you want to address uh, someone's problems, you know, if you want to, let's say, run a project that address some, somebody, you need to know what is what are actually the needs of that person. So when you identify the needs and the wills, I think you can be able to do something that really inspire that person. Mm 
Mm. And after that, you need to know their personal interests. What's actually, uh, what, what are they really passionate about? As he said, he gave example, you know, on um, music and all those stuff. So you really need to identify their personal interests. And do they really have an interest for their government or let's say for Togo, for example, for the population? And I'm talking about the public yeah. interest, you know. So that's how you can actually take some initiative to inspire them, to work for them. Okay. Yeah. Now we are going to uh, center a little bit about the activities you do as okay. individuals. We are going to tell me things from those activities. With the inspirations we want to give with the cultivating and the channel of the dedication, before uh, an individual or youth has to actually take uh, part of that interest that you have brought their ideals, they need to have certain specific skills, yeah. certain attitude, certain qualities. So how do you, or what specific skills do you feel those youth need for them to be able to have that impact that they desire or the dedication? The, the first part is the dedication and then the impact in the long term. We are talking about specific skills, qualities and the knowledge. What are some of the skills and knowledge that mm. they need? Well, uh, that's very that's very large, but... Um, I can I can think of three three main qualities and and skills that they definitely need. They definitely need to uh, be able to have some impact in the in the long shot. The first thing is to have a desire to learn. Mm -hmm. That's a quality. Whatever you want to do, if you don't have the desire to learn, you are never going to do uh, better you are never going to improve because there, whatever you do there is somewhere somewhere in this world that is doing it 10 times better yeah, for sure. so you have you need to be eager to learn to learn more that's the first thing the second thing is discipline discipline discipline, discipline is very important when you want to start something, when you want to start working on uh, a project or a business, most of the time we, we feel the passion at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Let me take this example. You, this is the new year, and uh, we have our new year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. One that comes often is, I want to go to the gym. Yeah. You see what I mean? <laughs> I want to go to the gym, work 30 minutes a day, every day till the end of the year, and build my muscles. Yes. Right. First day you go to the gym. Yeah, you have this passion, right? You work out. This is really touching home, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel it because I'm, I'm in this case. Now, second day you return, and then after the first week, you start losing this passion. Mm -hmm. You lose the passion, you lose the interest, you lose the motivation. And you miss one day, one week, one month, and one year. <laughs> you see? Yeah, it's very true. The passion vanishes. It vanishes. But if you have discipline and you are able to tell yourself that I have set myself to do this at this time every day and you commit to it, whatever your motivation is, whatever you're passionate about it or not, you know that you have to do it and you go do it. And that is what I call discipline. Okay. And this is the second important thing that every youth needs to evolve in his life. Now, coming back to the, to the last quality that I want to add, it's being able to recognize okay. what you have received. Okay. I, I don't know how I should put it, but this is it. Whatever the conditions we live in, whatever the challenges that we have lived, one day in our life, someone did something that helped us. Sure. Directly or indirectly, indirectly sure. something happened, and it helped us. And in order for you to grow, you need to be able to recognize it. You have to identify all the people around you who helped you directly or indirectly. If you are able to do that, you are going to preserve your humility. Mm. You are going to preserve your honor as you move forward in your personal development. And this is will prevent you from developing what we call an egocentric personality. <laughs> yeah. So those are the three main qualities that I can uh, 
uh, I can cite for the moment. The desire, the eagerness, the discipline, and the recognition. Exactly. Okay. So what is your submission? Yeah, um, he has said a lot of things, but I will say all we need is the passion we have for the work that we do or for the impact <laughs> that we actually want to create in the community. Because no matter how graduated you are, you, no matter how educated you are, no matter how many um, graduation you have, if you are not passionate about something, I don't think you can do it very well and impact those people around yourself. And he has said something that's, that is very important you know the youth uh, the person actually needs to be open-minded because when you are open-minded you'll be very humble and you'll be open to learn from people and also share your your various experiences so um, I think what I will say is is the passion we need to have for what we do how we do it because when you are passionate about something you'll be disciplined you know you have that <laughs> discipline um you 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 recognize you know actually everything you do and those people that are helping you and everything you know well we've enumerated a number of things mm -hmm. open-mindedness passion i think you highlighted on that but i also believe even with the passion there has to go with discipline sure. yeah. so that is one of the very difficult things to do yeah. because the example yeah. you yeah. gave about the gym i think a lot of people can relate mm -hmm. sometimes people have made a lot of plans they haven't been able to follow to the extent that they even don't want to make any plans anymore <laughs> so that also is a way of uh, acknowledging some of the challenges which is my next question okay so now when you do the projects or when you have those youth around you that you want to impact you spoke about personal interest mm -hmm. of some of those youth mm -hmm. you spoke about also uh, what motivates them how do you deal what are some of the challenges those individuals themselves what are some of the challenges you feel that they face the youth themselves that are willing to make that dedication they will surely be going through some situations are you preview to some of them yeah, uh, they, they they go through a lot of situations. I mean, we go through a lot of situations. <laughs> yeah, we go through a lot of situations, right? Okay. And uh, most of the time, the the main challenges that are faced are financial yeah. challenges. Ma money is right? always at the base. Money is always <laughs> at the base. It's at the core of everything, right? Mm. And uh, apart from money, there is also the, the environment, the mm -hmm. relationship, which is uh, a serious challenge. Because um, depending on where you are, depending on the people you are working with that's around you, you will either move forward or be staying on the same place. Or probably regress. <laughs> or regress. It happens that people regress, yeah. you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third thing, which I believe is, this, is the, the most important, is the lack of objectives. Sure. <clears throat> this is one of the main challenges that we encountered on the field. Mm. The youths, they don't have any clear vision or objective of what they want to do, where they want to go. Mm. And when you don't know what you want to do, when you, you don't know where you want to go, you are going to stray. Mm -hmm you are going to stray. There will be some lack of consistency. If there I'm will be a lack of consistency and you will be just, uh, how, how do we say, you'll be floating mm. on a small boat, you see, on the sea. Okay. And so you'll just go <laughs> where the wind will take you. Mm. You want to make some addition? Yeah. To that? Um, permit me to come back on that discipline. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's very important. Yeah, it's very important because, as you said, you know, when you know what you are looking for, where you are going, I don't think, I think you can be able to avoid some mistakes. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the main challenges, lack of discipline in most of youth's life. And another thing is the money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Without money, uh, there are many things that we can't do for your own community and then for yourself. Because, you know, everything we are talking about is around community development. Mm. Because we are, want, we are working to create impact in our community. First because, of all, sure, before, before us, beyond, you know. Because yeah. yeah. we want to see, uh, we want to bring a change in our, in our community. Either mm -hmm. it's our country, you know, our continent or whatever but we are working to bring some change so the second thing is maybe time you know again discipline 
<laughs> the time. So, comes back to that. Sure. When, when you say time, what, what do you mean? So I'm actually, I mean um, the availability of most of the youths. Because some of us, for example, are going to the university. So um, it's quite difficult for us, you know, to be here and there, you know, going to the, the university for courses, mm. coming back on the field for our personal activities, going to um, our volunteering work, you know, with our organization and uh, organizations and everything, it's very difficult, you know, for some of them if they don't know how to do the planning, how to plan their work, how to plan their days, months, and year. That's what I can mention, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, viewers, we are still on the key points talking about the youth dedication for impact, the conversation. Definitely, we'll have another session where we'll talk more about the action. So, in these project works that our guests do, they allow the participants in this initiative to explore their passion, to learn about effective strategies, to get what it means to be disciplined, open minded, have the desire, and all that. So, we are going for a quick break. When we come back, we are still live on the show. Welcome back on the key point. You can follow us every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. And uh, also a repeat on weekends. You can follow us on Facebook and on YouTube. So we are back in the studios. We are talking about youth dedication for impact, the conversation. You've spoken about some of the challenges that the youth face, what can inspire them, how to cultivate their dedication. But apart from you as project managers, apart from you as youth that also engage with other youth for impact, yeah. What are, what are some of the roles that stakeholders, we can talk about the mentors, the community managers, the chiefs, the government, the NGOs and CSOs, they are all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the roles that they can play so that we can have that youth dedication, first of all, and the impact we are looking at for? I want to start with you again. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky question. Because yeah. Um, of okay, course, because we, you're a business person. Well. I, I am, I am, I am. <laughs> I'm a business person and uh, at the same time project manager. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's a couple of things that would like to talk about, but uh, let's get it professional. <laughs> mm. One of the things that um, we encounter on the field most often is uh, the land of administrative paperwork. This is something that yeah we, we, we have to we have to mention it right we have to mention it and um, I know a lot of things have been done to to improve it to make things uh, faster and we hope that it will be improved as the year go by but this delays some some activities when you have to get some authorizations from these uh, institutions and other institutions to be able to implement your activities Project. right but on the other thing there is also the the issue of collaboration mm -hmm. okay and this is something pretty 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 serious right mm -hmm. because i found that some organizations depending on the the project Mm -hmm. or depending on the association that comes to them to request the help, they will be more involved or less involved. involved. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And this is something that I find very, uh, very sad, right? Mm -hmm. I find it very sad, very sad. And most of the time, it's maybe because they don't find any interest in collaborating with <laughs> those new partners that are approaching them. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I would ask those organizations, all of them that are watching us today, to open their doors, to open their doors, not only to uh, to big organizations, or the or ones they already the know, the ones they already know, right? <laughs> to give the chance to new ones, like okay. small grassroots organizations that are trying to grow, to give them the chance to prove what they can do and to accompany them, even if they cannot accompany them financially, at least. Technically, they can they can help them on a, a lot of things instead of just closing the door. The door the, okay, so any of experiences? Yeah. I mean, we can say positive ones, though. Yeah. 
uh, you know, we do have some positive experience, but we are talking about this thing because there is a problem, you know, that okay. needs to be fixed. Um, over, I mean, before everything, we need their support because they are more than our partners. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, they are the one that we count on. Without them, we can't do many things because we need, for example, the authorization before uh, running a project in the community. If you don't do so and you start working, you will see, you will hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember being forced to cancel an activity in the county because I needed an authorization for them, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, um, to mobilize the participation for the activity okay. and everything. And it's um, it's very awful because at the at the end of the day we couldn't do, do the activity. I don't know the main reasons. Maybe the reason is the money, as you said. <laughs> we are not bringing anything, any money directly. We, we don't look valuable. Sure, <laughs> sure. They want something. Excuse me to say that, but it's the truth actually. They want money. They need to be paid for something that is supposed to be for the community. And they don't have that sense of collaboration and they don't they don't really know what is good for the community actually. <laughs> if they that, that is a very big question. Sure, it's yeah. a very big question. Because they think before creating an impact in their own in their counties, you know, I'm talking about counties because yeah. I want to direct uh, mayors of our community. <laughs> <laughs> if they knew that small actions mm -hmm. make uh, bring uh, great impacts, mm -hmm. I think they will not put all those stuff, you know, all to those avoid barriers. those running projects, doing activities in their communities. And another thing is accountability. Mm -hmm. yeah. Accountability. Lack of accountability. We don't know what they are doing, how they are doing it, what money are they using for their own activities. And also public participation, right? I know accountability is part of public participation. But then as we always say, what anything for us without us is against us. So if you are doing something for me and I mean, I'm not there. I'm not seeing what you are doing, <laughs> how you are doing it. I don't think that thing is actually for me. So they need to involve the youth. They need to involve all the population, you know, in their various activities and uh, various initiatives. The time wouldn't permit, so I want us to come home now to okay. your individual activities. Maybe if there's a particular project you've worked on that you want to share with us, I mean, on the lighter level, and tell us how those projects have maybe had impact on the youth. It may be a, something in progress, something you've already done, but there's an impact that you've noticed. Because we also have to recognize the very little things that we do. So if you can share with us some of the projects personally that you've done. Yeah, sure, sure. You, you want to um, I will particularly mention two. Okay. The first one is a project that we we, we have just ended okay. on the, the 10th of, of January. Okay. It was a project called A Woman A Farm. Okay. A Woman A Farm. The objective of that project was to empower 215 women okay. in livestock breeding and entrepreneurship okay. in the three northern regions of Turkey. Okay. So that, that was the plan, that was the objective. We with our partners. We launched that project in 20, 2021. Okay. We launched it in Kara. And uh, we did a lot over the course of that project. Yeah, mm. We did a lot of things. I have to, to really um, say thank you to all the people who accompanied us during that project. At the end of the day, we were able to reach our objectives and go beyond what we have planned. Expectations. Congratulations. Yeah, we, 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 we went beyond that because, uh, as I said in the beginning, the objective was to empower 250 women, right? At the end of the day, we were able to directly train and monitor and evaluate and accompany 270 women coming from the regions of Central, Kara, and Savan. Okay. So it was. Um, Something very, very, uh, very moving. Yeah, very <laughs> moving. So that's the first thing. The second project I want to mention is a new project that we have just launched. The project is called uh, Kids Farm. So this project goes in 
let's say in, in the same in the same field as the the first one okay. we are always staying into the entrepreneurship domain and agricultural domain. I think you've understood that agriculture is like the backbone of the economy nowadays mm -hmm. where everything is focused on agriculture. Yeah, w agriculture is the backbone. That is true. That is true. And that is mainly because over half of the population lives in agricultural areas mm -hmm. and they live from agricultural agriculture activities. Sure. Right? So that is why we invest ourselves in this domain to be able to help those folks who are living from that activity to turn it into a commercial activity instead of uh, just a substantial actually activity. had some guests on the show on the small scale farmers and agribusiness because yeah. I think we, it's high time we start producing things ourselves manufacturing getting a byproduct yeah, and all that yeah, so yeah, yeah that's, that's a very commendable to, initiative exactly that's what we want to accomplish and uh, through this project called kids farm we are upscaling okay. some some young students below 18 years old okay. into this subject of entrepreneurship and uh, agribusiness mm -hmm. to make them better entrepreneurs than we are. I mean, right? starting at a younger age. Exactly. When you start at a younger good. age, they are still learning. They are still trying to find their way in life. Yes, right? So if you are able to channel their energy mm -hmm. and uh, all their interest onto that particular subject, mm -hmm. they are going to focus on it and they are going to develop it at a higher level. Sure. Because we, we started entrepreneurship quite late, mm. right? <laughs> most, of, most of us, we started uh, entrepreneurship after we got our bachelor's degree or master's degree, mm. so when we couldn't find any profit. Mm. But I believe that this, this path of entrepreneurship, it needs to come from the heart. Mm. Someone needs to be able at the age of 10 to say that I want to become an entrepreneur that will run a poultry farm. I want to become an entrepreneur that will run a, a welding business. Mm. And this is what we are trying to do by nurturing this new generation of entrepreneurs. Okay, so Miss Nadesh. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Really immerse into your conversation. Yeah. <laughs> actually, um, I was listening. It was, <laughs> it was actually impactful, right? Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations for your different actions. I know as youth, we do a lot in our communities, but I'll just mention one project that I've run and very proud of, actually. <laughs> um, recently, with before anything before everything you know we all the activities that we initiate it's because we have seen a problem in the community okay. Okay. and we want to solve right so i've seen recently that girls have um this poor menstruation management mm. and as a girl <laughs> i've been through you know many challenges and many difficulties so I had to think about something that can mm -hmm. create, uh, bring a change in uh, adolescent life. So I thought about running um, a project on which which was called Eco Girl, okay. you know, Ecological <laughs> Girl. Yeah, okay. yeah, and which was run in Bapure that is very far from Kara. It was a very big village. So the main, uh, the aim of the project was to train those young girls on sexual and reproductive health, uh, reproductive health um, um, uh, menstrual health, and also provide some reusable sanitary pads. I know it's it's a bit tricky and it's very difficult for young girls to buy some pads you know those pads that mm. that are sold um in the market so uh, it was very useful for them to have some pads that they can use wash reuse, and reuse, reuse. reuse. Yeah. reuse. <laughs> they cannot reuse it indefinitely right yeah but at least uh they can use it for one year at least they can one even year. go yeah I they mean, can go probably through. they are well kept i think it's, it's sure. i have yeah. heard of some of these projects before as well okay. sure and also we had to train them on some skills some basic skills how they as young girls they can think of generating incomes mm -hmm. because they need to uh, work they need to eat they they also need to find money <laughs> yeah yeah that, that is very that's very interesting yeah but wouldn't it be um, useful to actually 
teach them how to make those eco sure, eco, eco sure, cards. Sure, that's the next step of the project. Okay. So we are now more to do with the technology aspects. Uh, okay. not really. They can use. They can do it with their hands. Okay. Yeah. So that's the next step of the project. As I was saying, we are thinking about um, training them on how to um, uh, make those parts themselves. themselves. Mm. They can sell it and they can use it. They can also <laughs> donate, you know, to, um, <laughs> to other girls in the community. Yeah. Okay, so I will take your last words. What advice do you have? What are some of the things you think the youth can work on to channel that dedication for the impact? The stakeholders, what can they do to make your work Better, uh, sorry, better as project mm -hmm. managers and as individuals and youth as yourself. What can you tell the people watching us? Yeah, well, I will, I, I, I will go first if you if <laughs> know it. Yeah. Always. Okay. So my, my my first message for all the all the younger generations, all my brothers and sisters who are watching us, is to be disciplined. I'm mm. coming back. This is what I started <laughs> with, and this is what I'm ending with. Yeah, it, it, it's very important, right? It's very important to be disciplined, to be committed in what you, you are doing. You have to know clearly what you want to accomplish in five years, in 10 years, mm. and you have to commit yourself to do all the things that you don't like, but that you know will certainly help you get to the objective that you want to, to achieve. So that is my, my word for you. The, the second thing that I, I will say for the organization, the stakeholders, <laughs> public institutions, private institutions, is to open their doors, give their chance to these young entrepreneurs, these young um, founders of associations like us, right? <laughs> to give them the, the chance to collaborate with them. One of the things they can do is to open maybe a spot for these young associations, these young groups, to be able to participate in a project, in a project that they are running at the time. Okay. The project doesn't need to come from the youth. Maybe they are running a big project on, mm -hmm. let's say, malaria or HIV. They can just open a small spot there and invite some voluntary organization to come and help with it. They will gladly help you, okay. even if it's for free, because they want. They are committed to helping the the community grow. This is my word for them. Thank you very much. So, your your last words? Yeah. Um. I will first of all say thank you for hosting us. It was a great <laughs> opportunity, you know, to talk and discuss on this um topic. Although it was a very large one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, this is a conversation we can be having every time. But yeah. in the scope of television, in the scope of the time allocated yeah. for the program, we have to touch on this. So maybe the other aspects, the second or third aspect of this conversation we have to go more deeply into some of the sure. activities in person if possible mm -hmm. even go with you guys on the field to really see firsthand yeah. what actually goes that, that very good that will be the second this is just the yeah. conversation so we'll get to the action then we'll look at some of those things okay thank you um so thank you once again for hosting us and for the youth i would say um as you said they must have a vision they must know what they want for themselves, what they want for the community, and what's, what is actually the purpose of their life. What are, why are they working? What are they working for? What are they looking for, actually, in five years, ten years? You know? And never be disappointed, because I know we will be going through many challenges. We will go, we will knock on many doors and they will not be open for us. He's but calling oh for yeah. those sure. ones to be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, but we will not stop. Mm. We will continue knocking until they open it for us. <laughs> so once you fall down, please wake up. Stand exactly. up. Be re 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 uh, how do you say it? Resilient? Resilient. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. It, it's very important because, as I said, every... Um, um, every action that we are taking now is creating a very big impact, even without knowing. Mm -hmm. So continue doing what you are doing with all the passion, with all the love. You will see uh, that the effort, I mean, you will see the impact of uh, all everything you've been doing. The you'll effort, see the result. Sure, you'll see the result. And you'll be very happy for that. 
Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Mrs. Tak Bode, who is a business and project manager, <coughs> Miss Nandesh Abire Bumoge, who is a jurist yeah, and well. a project manager. As the word goes, little drops of water make an ocean. The impact we are looking out for wouldn't manifest itself today. It's going to be the very few steps you take one year, two years, three years, and ongoing. So this conversation aims to drive action and impact, actually. So the conversation we had on due dedica dedication for impact is very important. So to the viewers watching, Mr. Stark and Ms. Nandesh, they both say, keep going forward, keep pushing forward. Nothing is going to stop you. Mm. The impact you are looking out for is going to come. So you can watch this show every Tuesdays and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and 13.30 a.m. And on weekends, you can follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Stay tuned for another episode next week. It's a bye. Goodbye. <sighs>